Welcome to Matt Loves Eurovision. It's my Eurovision 2022 Top 40 Rankings Countdown. Place number 12, it's Sweden, Cornelia Jacobs and Hold Me Closer. Please do click on the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and like, share and comment below. So Sweden stands as the modern day superpower of Eurovision. They've had the most success in recent times. They've had two wins in the past decade, 2012, 2015, which takes them, it's taken them to six wins, just one win short of Ireland's record of seven wins. They've consistently finished high in grand final results in sort of the past 10 to 15 years. And last year's 14th place, which some countries would kill for, um, was actually one of their lowest, one of one was relatively low from their perspective. Their national selection show, Melody Festival, is sort of the biggest and best known and most watched of all the national selections. And yet, I think in some ways, the fandom have begrudged Swedish entries in recent years. Um, um, but until Cornelia Jacobs has come along, because this year it's had a huge amount of support and love uh, from Eurofans, and probably the biggest reaction, or positive reaction to a Swedish entry since Euphoria in 2012. Now, like many recent winners of um, Melfest, or eventual winners of Melfest, Cornelia, it wasn't new to the contest. She entered Melfest in about a decade ago, a couple of times when she was part of a girl group. She'd also uh, written a song that entered Melfest last year as well, but it's as a solo singer with the song that she co-wrote, Hold Me Closer, that she has won the opportunity to go to Eurovision. Much to the international fandom's relief, uh, that the international jury voted this as it came first in the international jury and second in the public vote, which was enough to see her win overall. Q, much jubilation, and I did see an awful lot of tweets going, that's it, winner of Eurovision 2022, Stockholm, here we come, or Malmö, or Gothenburg. So bold claims, certainly. Um, but before we move on to kind of the chances, um, what about the song? Um, well, I think this of all Swedish entries is very polished, it's professional, it's accomplished, it's well produced, but perhaps more unusually, I think there's more depth and emotion in Hold Me Close than we would normally see in, uh, that we normally get from Sweden. Um, their songs can sometimes come across as just too polished, always very accomplished, but sometimes a bit too polished and perhaps slightly devoid of real, true, deep or raw emotion. But I think Cornelia's vocal delivery, and I happen, some people say that she hasn't got a great vocal, I think that's nonsense. She does have a very strong vocal. Um, I think her vocal do, it does do is convey kind of vulnerable and raw emotional experience that really suits the song well. And it really connects with people. I've seen that at, at the um, pre-parties and for directly in, uh, at London myself. It's also got a rousing and anthemic chorus, which is always a good thing when it comes to a Eurovision song. Um, so are we looking at the winner of Eurovision 2022? Possibly. Um, will be this moment that Sweden draw level with Ireland? I think it's, it is a definite possibility. It's not a done deal. And I think some Eurofans seem to think that, it will, it's, that this will be the one that winner. I think it's obviously very, very popular with fandom. But obviously it's not yet been tested with the voters, or the votes of an international... Saturday night TV viewing audience, and the, and I'm sure there's absolutely zero doubt that it will be in the final. It will be in the grand final on the Saturday. I do think she Cornelia's got a really good chance if the public votes stack up with jury votes as well. Enough, I think this because I think this will do well with the juries, even if it's not the jury winner. And sometimes the winners come from those songs that you know don't necessarily win either the jury vote or the public vote, but do well enough in both and. Some examples, Duncan Lawrence in 2019, also Jamala in 2016, are all examples of, of where that have happened. Um, I do think that actually Sweden is in one of the best positions to pick up a big chunk of votes from both jury and public. Um, and even if it's not enough to win, I certainly think this will deliver another top five and possibly higher. And I do, and, it, and, and quite a few people have said, and I do feel it myself, that that big anthemic chorus that just has that certain feeling of this is the this is the Eurovision winners reprise moment, um, but 
We shall have to see. Uh, she won the um, Boom Bang a Man uh, vote at the Art Royal Voxel Tavern, part of the Eurofest, and they have never called a winner right yet. So I wonder, <coughs> maybe she will be the one to break that curse. We shall see. And do come back and join me very soon.